everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of Fidelis Fund Features, where we showcase some of the more advanced features of Abacus in a fun and interesting way. Today, Dr. Rob Hurlston, co-founder and chief engineer of Fidelis, will be contemplating the journey that Santa's sack makes down the chimney and what happens to all the gifts when it finally hits the fireplace. We hope you enjoy and happy holidays to all. Hi there, everybody. So a little bit of background on the methods that we'll be using today as always. Again, this time we'll be using an explicit type analysis to drop the, drop the sack down the chimney. And some of the important learning outcomes from this analysis will be the use of membrane elements to help Santa's sack behave more like a fabric and explicit an analysis just for studying dynamic events in general. All right, so we're gonna start off with making some parts in this model. And um, with the first thing we're gonna make is the sack. So we're gonna call this part sack. It's gonna be a deformable shell revolution. And let's just make this 1000. So we were in the meter uh, realm. We're going to make the sack around 800 millimeters in uh, diameter. So what we want is something like 400 millimeters in radius. And it's going to be a circle to start with, or a sphere type shape, but don't worry, with the membrane elements, we will see it become more of a sack shape once uh, we run the preliminary step. Okay, so there's our sack. We're also going to need to make uh, the floor. So we're going to do discrete rigid planar for the floor, and we're going to say... Uh, that's going to be a four meter square. So negative 2,000, negative 2,000, and 2,000, 2,000. Okay. We've got the floor, and we should rename that floor just so that we can keep track of our parts. We're going to make the chimney next chimney that's going to be a discrete rigid extrusion and the chimney is going to be uh, 1200 by 1000 so if we do negative uh, 500 by negative 600 and then 500 by 600 we should have a chimney and we want the chimney to be eight meters high, which is kind of the height of a house and then a little bit on top. So now we've got kind of something that looks like a chimney. And one thing we need to do to the chimney just whilst we're here is make an opening for the sack to fall through. So we're going to uh, use some artistic license here we're going to go something like right here. Oops. And uh, we want this to be somewhere around, uh, let's say, a meter high. And then we're going to use this radius and now we've got an opening to our chimney just need to add in the base here there we go and now we want to just basically go not through all but we want to go by two millimeters and just so that we have a nice opening there so now we have an opening to our chimney we also need to make basically like a ramp in the the base of the chimney and this is going to be so that the presents actually fly out so this is kind of a little bit of a cheat so that we can see some action on the gifts there so that's going to be 1200 by 600 so we can do minus 600 by minus three minus 300 and 600 by 300 and that should give us the size of the small ramp and then finally we need to make I'm just going to make one gift for now 
uh, and actually I'm going to probably do a, a bunch more of them uh, offline here. So the gift, we want it to be something that's maybe a couple of hundred millimeters in size. So we'll do a negative 100 by negative 100. And then we'll do 100 by 100. I'll get a little square gift. And I'm going to extrude that by, let's say, 100 millimeters. So now we've got something that looks like a, box, a gift box. And we're ready to assemble our parts. So we've got all the different parts of this analysis. We're going to assemble them all first, and then we're going to start moving them around. So apparently I made the chimney upside down to start with. So we're going to spin that around. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to spin it around the X axis by 180. Now it's in the correct orientation and now we need to move it into position. So we're going to move it to the back of the floor. So that looks pretty good there. We've got our sack that also needs to be rotated about the X axis by 90 degrees this time. Oops, I'm going to rotate it. So we're going to rotate it by the x-axis by 90 degrees. Okay, now our sack's in the right orientation. We're going to use this feature to move the sack close to where we want it to start from. So up here somewhere. And then we'll kind of tune in that location uh, right now. So we want to move it about, let's say, uh, negative 50 in the x direction. Now let's call it negative 150. Okay, so that now looks like yeah, maybe more like 250. Okay, so that's now near the center of the chimney ready to fall down. We also need to move our gift into place. And so we're going to do that by again, getting it somewhere near to start with. And then we'll move that into location later once we arrange the gifts in the sack. Finally, we need to uh, rotate this ramp around. So we actually need to rotate it about the Z axis by 90 degrees. And then we need to rotate it about the Y axis by 45 degrees. So 45 and um, maybe negative 45. Okay, now we can just simply move this into position. Um, here, and we will basically want to move this location to there. And now we've got basically a ramp that'll fling the gifts out onto the floor instead of just bouncing back up the chimney. So we've got our parts assembled. We can move on to the next part, which is the step. And so we're actually going to have two steps. We're going to have preload, which is where we're just going to let the gifts settle into the sack. That is going to be an explicit dynamic step. Uh, it's going to run for half a second. And we do want some mass scaling here just to make this run a little bit quicker. So we're going to aim for a target increment size of one E minus six. Okay. So second step is going to be drop, we'll call it. And it's going to be another dynamic explicit step. This time it's going to be two seconds long and we can keep the mass scaling from the previous step. So our steps are in place. We do need to make some interactions. Firstly, we need an interaction to hold all of these rigid parts in place. So we're going to use rigid body. We're going to select the body elements to be the floor, the ramp, and the chimney. So let's actually just do that. Okay. And we want the point to be the reference point that we just made. And now we should be able to uh, fix that point and fix all the rigids at once. We also, of course, need to add in some contact, and we're going to use general contact for that, which is basically all encompassing. To do the contact property, we simply leave it as is. We don't really need any uh, special 
uh, properties, we can just simply use Abacus default here, not trying to get too fancy. And that's it for the interactions. And then we go into go into the loading. So first of all, we do need to fix this boundary condition uh, so that none of these rigids can go anywhere. And then we need to apply a load uh, of uh, gravity, and that's going to be minus 9,800 meters per second squared in the wide, in the, ah, we're going to actually, it's going to be in the Z direction. So that should give us gravity. Next, we're going to mesh the parts. So we're going to mesh the chimney can just be a pretty coarse mesh. We might want to make it a little better than that, just purely because uh, the opening is not going to look very round. So this might be a little better. Uh, we're going to mesh the floor in the same way. We're going to mesh the gift and then the ramp. And then finally, we need to mesh this part. But remember, we want membrane elements here. So we're going to use membrane elements. Um, we want a reasonably uh, fine mesh for the sack just so that it kind of behaves in a realistic way. So that's OK. And we should give some properties to our part. So we do want to make a sack material. So we're going to use a density for that of, uh, let's see here, one e oops one e minus 10 and we want a mechanical elasticity of 25 megapascals and just Poisson's ratio can be 0.3 we also need to create a material for the gift so that's going to be um, a density of 5 e to the minus 10 and we also want to have some elasticity for that. So we're going to use 300.3. And we actually do want to add some plasticity, which kind of just helps us from bouncing all over the place here. So we're going to use 1, 0, and then 3, 0 0.03. So now we have our materials in place. We should probably give this material the name uh, gift again just to keep track of what we're doing and we want to give sections to each of these so we're going to start off with the gift first and that's going to be a solid homogeneous uh, part so we're going to say gift and then for the sack we're going to give the name sack and we're going to actually use a shell membrane type element this time Material is going to be sack, and the thickness of the membrane we're just going to call one millimeter for now. So now we've got our materials all squared away, we can assign them to our parts. So we can go here and we can use sack material for this, and then only the gift needs a material. And of course, we're going to use the same material for all the other gifts we make. And we're going to go ahead and make the added gifts now. Uh, mesh them and put them in place so that we can start the simulation. Okay, so we've arranged the gifts now inside here. And if we get rid of these couple of parts here, we can see what we've got. So we've got a few different size boxes here and something that looks maybe like a tennis racket. So a couple of things we need to do before we start. One thing that we need to make sure is that when we uh, run our initial load, we actually hold the top of the sack in place. So we're going to apply a boundary condition to the preload step. Oops. To the preload step. And we're going to make sure we switch that off uh, during the drop step. And that's basically going to be how the part begins to drop. Another thing we need to do is make sure that we have enough output. So instead of uh, 20, let's do um, let's do 120 
outputs per step. Okay, and then we should be able to create this job and we're going to call it Santa Drop. We're going to use some parallelization as always to try and make this thing run a bit quicker and we are ready to submit our job. Okay, so you can see we've got some results here and one of the first things we might want to do if we actually want to use this for some study is to see how fast Santa's sack is falling when it hits the ground. And so what we've got is an estimate of about 10.5 meters per second. So if we set our limit here to around 10.5 meters per second or 10,500 millimeters per second, we should see um, that's about the speed we get when we hit the ground. So the sack should turn red uh, somewhere around the time when we hit, hit the base of the fireplace. So... Uh, once we release the sack, we can see it speeding up, speeding up, turns red, and we get pretty much uh, the speed we were expecting, which is a good kind of sanity check uh, that you should always be doing when you run analyses like this. Stop the video here and change it to this kind of view. You can see I've already actually made the colors um, look a little bit more like uh, what we might expect to see since we're, there are quite a few colors to change. If we... Um, Take a look at how Santa's sack behaves when we drop the gifts in. So we've got that first preload step. And as we expect, the membrane elements mean that the sack essentially becomes sack shaped or, or looks like a sack as soon as those gifts hit it. And that's ex exactly the, the kind of behavior we were hoping to see there. Um, perhaps one other thing we might want to do is look inside. Uh, so we can see here the outline of all the gifts that we kind of placed in there. And we can visualize what happens to them as the sack falls, which is kind of interesting to see. So it falls, and then we should see the kind of a what tumble dryer type of effect inside there. And so I think that's um, everything you'd want to see in this analysis. We really appreciate you, as always, watching the Fidelis features, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. And we hope you all have a very Merry Christmas, and stay safe, and have a Happy New Year.